Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a pick a rose reading. So this reading today is going to be who is thinking about you? Are you on someone's mind? And if so, who is it and what are they thinking? So only take what resonates with you, you guys, and get rid of what doesn't. These beautiful roses, these are called twin flame rose organites created by my friend Michelle from Wing and Bell. I'll put her information down below, but this is what you're going to choose from. I'll put those those timestamps down below as well. You guys can choose the entire reading if you want to, one or two or however you guys want to do it. But this right here is the gold rose. We have the red rose and the silver white rose. So I'll put everything down below. As far as all the decks that I'm going to be using here, um, I actually pre-shuffled everything. So everything is ready to go. That way I could save on time because I wanted to use a lot of different decks here today. So instead of telling you guys what I'm using as I'm placing out all the cards, everything is just going to be listed down below in the order that I place the cards out. So I'm using decks not only for myself, I'm using decks from other creators too. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, if you guys chose the gold rose, a number one, who is thinking about you? So while shuffling this deck here, I got the initials J, B, and N, okay? So just take that as it resonates for you. That could be someone's initials. That could be the name of where somebody works. That could be someone connected to this person with those initials. These could be your guys' initials together. So this could be an indication of who is thinking about you. So we have JBN. Of course, this could be you know mixed around in a different order as well. But that is what we have as far as letters go. So these next cards represent, we have the behaviors, the characteristics, as well as the appearance of this person. We have somebody who is confident in their behavior. They have characteristics coming through as classy. And we also have their appearance as either green, could be hazel eyes as well. That's a little hint of green and brown, right? So that is who is thinking about you guys at this particular time. Now, of course, this could be someone who who you, um, you know, you know very well, or somebody that maybe you barely know. So this is what we've got. So now our next card is autumn. So there could be some sort of a significance to the months of autumn or fall. You could see this person again in the, these months. You could have met this person. Autumn could be um, a particular time that's very special to you in this connection. Could just be this person's birthday, your birthday, etc. We also have the spirit of the jester. So this one, when it popped up, I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Well, we have thief, trickster, and hustler. What I picked up from this person's energy is that right now they may just be that person that's not able to settle down. They could be trying to hustle some sort of career, and it did make sense with the very last card that came through. This could be somebody who's just really focused right now on their money, somebody who's really focused on building their empire. And so they could be a little tricky for you. They could be hard for you to place your thumb upon. You might want to tie this person down and they may not want to be tied down. So you could have dealt with some sort of lies or deception with this individual. It just could be that they're just being very enigmatic in your life. It's like slipping through your fingers. You're not quite able to hold or, or put a grasp on this individual. And I'm just getting here that they do not want to be grasped. They, they have other things that they want to focus on because now we have the rocket, which is voyage. This is somebody who is hot, somebody who is, you know, just like constantly going towards their goals. You know, they're very erect in life. They just want to go. They have places that they want to go. They have things that they want to do. They have places that they want to see. This could be somebody who is constantly traveling as well. Okay. So we're asking spirit to tell us, who is, is this, you know, who's thinking about you? So it's not like this person isn't thinking about you at all, but it just means that this individual, while they do think about you, it looks like they have some other things that they're trying to either accomplish or tend to as well. 
We do have eye to eye. Now I got a couple of messages with this one. There's something about you and this individual when you look into each other's eyes, because see the eyes card came up here, green eyes. So they look into your eyes, you look into their eyes, and it's just like all of a sudden, all of these, these issues, everything disappears. So when the two of you are together, it does look to me like you guys may really have that special, you know, just very very special magical time when you're actually spending time together. But when you and this person are not together, they may just kind of be off just chasing a dream, chasing a goal. And so it kind of seems like you guys lose some of that magic. And it may be that you guys just don't see eye to eye right now on certain things such as goals, uh, commitment, relationship, just the way that you guys view life. Now, this doesn't have to be romantic. This could be a family member, a friend, a coworker. This could be anyone. But you may just not be able to see eye to eye with this individual. And it could just be because they're in a space where they just want to go, 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 and they're trying to hustle something. And you may want to settle down and do something concrete. And I'm just seeing that you and this person just may not be on the same page at this time. So then we came across the card of defensive. So this person's ego and pride may be getting in the way. So they're, they're putting their defenses up. They might be saying, you know, no to a particular timeline or no to a particular thing that you want versus what they want. So they might be denying you at this time or saying no to you is what I'm picking up on with this person's energy. So this made complete sense to me when these words came through. I feel too much pressure right now. So this person doesn't want to feel pressured. This person is not the type of person that you can pressure. I mean, people don't usually respond to pressure very well anyways. I mean, some people thrive in it, but others usually don't, um, especially if someone's not ready to do something. They'll become very defensive. They're, you know, it, it's not necessarily ego and pride at that point. It's just, you know what, no means no, or that's not what I want to do right now. Please respect my boundaries. So I'm getting that with this individual is that you may really, really want something with them or you want them to do things you your way or see things your way. And it's just not happening right now. So this is the person that's thinking about you. So when I got some tarot cards, I picked three and I have the seven of cups the, uh, and the king of cups and the magician. So you guys could be dealing with a water sign individual, a Scorpio specific. It doesn't have to be. Scorpio is actually tied to the autumn slash fall season because we've got October and November, which is, um, you know, autumn. So this could be the birthday connection there. But this king of cups is really on a journey to find themselves really on a journey to emotionally master themselves on some sort of level. And I'm just seeing that your person isn't quite there yet. You know, they still have some things that they need to learn, still need to grow and heal. Seven of cups is a card of someone who might still just be kind of wanting to keep their options open, wanting to just in a way, be like in a little bit of a fantasy, not necessarily wanting to settle down. The magician is somebody who's very focused on themselves. They're trying to, again, manifest something in their life. They're wanting to manifest a dream, a goal. So I'm getting here that your person just may not be willing to share right now with you their emotional side. They're kind of keeping it to themselves. They might see emotions right now as weak or something that would just kind of take away from their current goals and their um, ambitions and their dreams. So they could see you as somebody who's kind of getting in the way of what they want to do right now and their work and their career. So the advice for the viewer when dealing with this individual who is thinking about you, but again, they are all also very focused on themselves. It says, remain calm under pressure, even when other people are trying to engage you in conflict. So there's something about this individual that just really gets under your skin. Something about their behavior, they, they trigger you like crazy. They cause you to lose composure. And now this could be past energy where you've lost composure with this person before. You've lost your patience. They've tried your patience. You're just like, oh my God, I just, I, I, I feel like I'm going crazy when I'm dealing with this individual. Well, the magician is somebody who goes to the beat of their own drum. This is not somebody who wants to really come together and connect and collaborate with you or anyone at this time. They just kind of want to be in control of their own destiny. So this right here is a person that you just need to let go and, and let be at this time. Okay. 
So now we have, uh, ask the Oracle. So the solution, we have this life challenge right now that you are experiencing. One of the challenges is needs. So it says, empower yourself to put your needs first. It may be that when you've been dealing with this person here, there's something about you not putting your own needs first. Maybe you're not taking time to really really ask yourself, what do I need this person? You may want something as in, I, I really need this person to love me. I really need this person to be there for me. I really need this person in my life in order to be happy or feel complete. There's a lesson here for you to consider empowering yourself and putting your needs first in your life, instead of kind of putting, giving your eggs to this person. Cause I'm getting here that this person's focusing on their own eggs and you need to do the same, but you may have found yourself feeling lopsided in this connection because you've given way too much to this person, or you placed way too many expectations on this person. You may have wanted to really manifest something with them, but it's like seven of cups is that it's, it's not a very solid energy. You know, it might just be at this point, like you have more of a fantasy attached to this individual of how things could be. The potential is there, but at this time, it's more of a dream than it is a reality. Now, it doesn't mean it will always be that way, but it is very tempting to want to run with, you know, those types of feelings, even if we're not actually getting any kind of, you know, cooperation on, on another person's end. We're just running strictly on feelings. So there is an opportunity for us to also master something within ourselves, get a hold of our emotions before we just, they completely run away with us and we just fall off that cliff. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this card right here, it says don't drown. And that makes a lot of sense. Don't fall off that cliff and drown below. Someone's entering your life. This person has entered your life to trigger patterns of clinging need. See needs. I couldn't believe it when I was shuffling these cards, how much they played off of each other. It's amazing. It says you'll benefit if you can deal with issues such as codependency, love addiction, and needing approval from this person. So this right here, this individual has come into your life in order to trigger you like hell. So that way you can deal with your patterns of neediness, clinginess, maybe your addiction and fantasies to this person, needing approval from this person. So there's something about this individual, like I said, that really gets under your skin, but it really helps. This person really helps you to finally take back your own power and start to manifest in power or empower your own life and to create your own reality without needing this person to be a part of your story. So this indication here is not telling us that your individual and you can't come together and that this connection cannot be successful at a later date. But this person that's thinking about you right now is thinking in terms of other things. And that's what you need to know today about this individual. You may be on your mind, they may be you may be on their mind, but it's not to the point where they're not taking care of themselves. This person may be so much on your mind that it's now at the detriment of your own well being, and that's a problem. And that might be one of the reasons that spirit's bringing it forth like this today. It could be a message for you that you've got to save yourself first, you've got to pull yourself out of this drowning pool. Okay, so I asked spirit to give me an indication of where this person is at right now with you. I feel that with this card, eight of pentacles here, this person is very focused on either work or building something in the material world. They may not be hyper-focused on emotionally connecting with you or anyone else at this time. They may very well be focused on a particular goal. Okay. But the eight of pentacles is a card of working hard. Do you feel like regardless of wherever this person's at right now in their life, whatever hard work that they do is going to help the two of you in the future, because you're going to know where this person's at with the effort that they put into your connection. So that means that if they put zero work into your connection and they don't treat you like a priority, you're going to know where you stand with this person, or they are going to start to show up and they are going to put their best foot forward to say, Hey, I want to work on this connection. So either way, you're going to know something here. And this, uh, pentacles to me is related to end of the year energy. 
fall slash winter. So to me, by the end of the year, you're going to know where you stand with this individual, with the effort that they're either making or not making towards you in this connection. And you're going to have your answer at that time with what you want to do and where you're going with this individual. And some of you may come to this realization sooner than later, but some of you, it may take that long. That's what I'm seeing here. So anyways, this is the person that is thinking about you or that you're obviously thinking about them too. But right now where their head is at is mostly on working in the material world and building their empire in some way, rather than trying to work things out and build an empire with you right now. So hopefully this advice here will help some of you to pull yourself out of that, you know, drowning energy, if that resonates. And if this particular number one does not resonate with you, you guys do not have to take it. You can choose number two or three. So let's go ahead and move on to those sets. All right, guys, if you chose number two, the red rose, let's go ahead and get your messages. Who is thinking about you? So we had the letter K, and this was the first set that got any numbers. We have four and six. So this, of course, could be 46. This could be 64. This could be, you know, like an address. This could be, um, you know, somebody's, like, uh, jersey. You know what I mean? Like a team or a jer jersey that people love. There, there could just be something like that. Um, also, four plus six is 10, or it could just be a four on its own or a six. So these particular numbers and letter are connected to the person that is thinking about you. So let's go ahead and go to the next set. We have somebody that could be older than you, okay? Doesn't have to be by much, but they could be older than you. We also have somebody who's very faithful, and we have somebody that may be a people pleaser. So sometimes people pleasers, you know, that's not always the best behavior. It's really nice, right? Because people that, you know, their language of love is they want to show people that they care. So they may do a lot of acts of service for you in order to let you know that they, that they care for you. That's not a bad thing, but sometimes people pleasing can be a codependent behavior where we are pleasing other people to the point where we are not paying attention to our own needs. And then we can become very lopsided in our energy and resentful things like that. So as much as somebody may mean, well, it could be that they have issues too, so if you're experiencing issues with this person, this could be kind of giving you a little bit of that energy. Even though somebody might be older than you, they may have some issues that they need to work through. I'm also getting, if some of you guys are dealing with someone who is in another relationship, they may be trying to do the right thing. Even if they're not in love with their spouse anymore, they may be trying to do the right thing by staying faithful and not stepping out of that relationship until they are, are able to do so. And they may also be trying to please everyone in their family or everyone around them in order to keep the peace. I'm also getting that energy as well. So things are up in the air with this individual, whoever this is. Okay. You don't know where you stand. You don't know what's going to happen. They don't even know what's going to happen. Things are very much in the air. So when this card came through, it made a lot of sense. Spirit of stone. So things kind of seem to be frozen right now. Things are really delayed. This person may be longing for you or longing for things to change in their situation, but it's stuck right now for whatever reason. And I'm really getting that people pleasing energy, trying to please everyone else but themselves. Okay. They're not taking great care of themselves. We also have the hummingbird, which is beautiful. You guys could be seeing hummingbirds. Um, they could also, there could be a connection between you and you and them with hummingbird or hummingbirds, but hummingbirds, this is sweetness. Okay. There's a lot of sweetness that still exists between you and your individual. They may still be sweet on you regardless of how things appear or regardless of how things are going right now. There's still this very sweet energy that may exist here. So there's not a lack of sweetness here. Now, next card we have was interesting. We have abandonment wounds. So again, someone is afraid to either abandon someone or somebody has abandonment wounds that stem from people pleasing and codependency trauma and childhood, something like that. So abandonment wounds play a huge factor with this individual and how they're acting towards you or what has happened with them. Huge. 
Now we have illuminated, conscious, aware, and uncovered. I like that this came through because this told me that your person is aware of their problems. They are. You're aware of your person's problems too. You guys might be also, you came together in order to trigger one another, much like number one, to illuminate each other's traumas, to illuminate things that need to be healed right? So there's still some very sweet energy, still some love here, but there's all these issues and all these, um, just traumas that still need to be addressed and healed. And until they're addressed and healed, it kind of seems like this connection may not be able to go anywhere at this time. So the words that came through with your person is, I'm sorry, I couldn't follow through with my promises. So someone may have said something to you. They promised you something. They told you they were going to do something, but they're not able to follow through with that. And the reason why is because there's all these other things that are on the table. There's all these other factors that are playing into this situation. So it's not necessarily an excuse, but it is in a way. There are other things that I've got to deal with. There are other things that are um, either a priority right now or that I've got issues with that I need to heal first. That's what I'm seeing here. So the tarot made sense because we have four of pentacles, which is scarcity mindset, three of pentacles, collaboration, and the fool. Now, what this told me here is that somebody's mindset right now is very scarce. Scarcity mindset. They're not able to let something go. So if you guys are dealing with someone who is in another relationship, they are afraid to let go. They are afraid to lose their home. I do see four pentacles as our four walls around us, right? We are afraid to lose our home. We are afraid to lose our assets. We are afraid to lose maybe children or, you know, the love or the, um, just, uh, respect or whatever of the people around us. We're really afraid. So I do feel like this person that's thinking about you, they are sweet on you and they are thinking about you, but they've got all these other issues that are weighing them down. Again, it's not an excuse. That's just the way it is. So the three of pentacles is coming together and collaborating and being together in the 3d world. I'm getting here. It's just not happening. It's just not possible right now until this person sheds their old skin until this person has a full on reawakening and they're able to completely clear their energy or their past and activate and, and have that fresh reborn energy on their journey. They're just not able to come together and work things out with you at this time. I, that's just what I'm seeing here. So I'm going to actually go into this card first because this made sense when I saw this. The answer to your question is unlikely. It's unlikely that you and this person will, it will be able to come together at this time. There's too many other things that are a problem here. So this, this is um, advice for the viewer. Wishes, I trust what is meant for me, will show up at the right moments in life. That makes total sense. So we may wish for an outcome with this individual. We may wish for things to be a certain way, but spirit's trying to tell us what is meant for you will show up at the right moment. What, what is meant for you and this individual when you're supposed to work it out or when you're supposed to come back together, or whatever's going on here, this is going to happen when the time is right. This cannot be rushed. There's certain steps that need to be taken first before you realize something, before your person realizes something, before the people that are connected to all of you realize something, something needs to play out first. I'm getting here. Some sort of karma needs to be cleared. Some sort of lesson needs to be, you know, gone through first before you two can really have a successful connection. Now we have silent treatment. This person may be quiet right now. They may have ghosted you. They may have put you on silent mode. You may be giving them the silent treatment because of what they're going through, but it says here, a love interest, which is your person or you gives you the silent treatment or is acting distant. But it says, if given the space to miss you a little, he or she will resurface. So I do feel like what spirit's trying to tell you guys that if this person has gone silent or cold on you, it's only a matter of time before they resurface in your life again. Why would this be? Because I can see that this person is still sweet on you. There's still enough good between the two of you that it's not lost forever, but maybe just give this person some space and some time, give them this time and this space in order to work out their issues. And when they do this, this will give you guys an opportunity to reconvene at a later date. So I asked spirit to give me a message with what this person is thinking about you and this connection. We have the ACE of swords makes sense. Okay. Especially with this pentacles energy here. 
Yeah, interesting. It's kind of like number one. Number one, you guys may be connected to number two. The reason I say that is because a timeline of the end of the year came through for um, number one. They had pentacles and, you know, that, that to me was towards the end of the year. So winter. It's just the reason I say pentacles and swords are towards the end of the year is because different sets of cards out there have become very confusing to people. Uh, Doreen Virtue's cards or, you know, Radley Valentine's cards, which they were connected at one time. Um, sh uh, they saw swords as winter and um, pentacles as autumn. Uh, but in your traditional, you know, rider weight system, pentacles can be viewed as winter and swords can be viewed as, as, uh, you know, autumn. And, and also there's other systems out there where it could be completely different. And I might, I might even be saying that incorrectly. It may not be right or wait. So all I'm trying to say is that that's why I always say whenever I see pentacles or swords, however you guys see timing, it could be either or that's, that's why I'm telling you guys that. So but that was very heavily in number one, but this clearly see, you can see winter energy. Okay. And of course, winter can be different at other, uh, other ends of the earth as well, <laughs> you know, other parts of the world. So it says brilliant ideas that may need refinement. This person has some ideas. Okay. They have thoughts about your connection for sure, but something needs refining. We already know this, this sword is kind of stuck in the stone. And so until this person has the strength to pull this or has just the perfect energy to pull this sword out of the stone, things are stuck in this connection. And I think this is kind of cool. And I didn't make this correlation until right this second, even though I already saw these cards. Look at that. Spirit of stone, stone. Look at that. Wow. That's cool. So that tells me here that until someone's energy is less, less you know, tight and less, you know, just kind of all just bound, like wound up until somebody's energy is much clearer, much more high vibrational, can melt all that ice, can melt all that stone. This connection is still going to be kind of delayed. That's what I'm seeing here. So we have overcoming obstacles with faith that everything will work out. I feel like right now this person actually doesn't know if whatever they're going through that they're going to be able to, to work work out their issues and their challenges and problems. So they're having to come to their own conclusion. You've got to give this person space and time to come to their own conclusion. So it says communicate clearly and concisely and remain objective. So your person is really trying to figure something out. They are, they really are trying to figure something out and figure out how they can go about this objectively. So there's not a lot of emotions that th this person isn't heavily in their emotions right now towards you in this, in this connection right now, because they have other things that they need to tend to. They have other things that they need to be objective about. They have, um, it's not more important things because you are important to this person. I definitely feel that here, but the thing is they have other things that are pending that require their full attention. So if they're emotional about you or they're running on emotions or they allow themselves to kind of go to that emotional side, they're not going to be able to take care of whatever they need to take care of here. Okay. So with this ACE, this beginning, this tells me here that um, could be towards the end of the year, whenever that is for some of you guys, or winter, fall, winter energy, that this is going to be where or when they're able to uh, communicate with you clearly about what they're doing, where they're going, what their plans are, so that way you know where you stand and you know the way forward with this individual. So that is who is thinking about you, you guys, this, this energy here. And I hope that resonates. And if it doesn't, no worries. You guys can always choose either one or maybe just three at this point, since I kind of feel like number one and two are connected. All right. So let's go ahead and go into number three. All right, you guys, if you chose number three, the silver white rose, let's go ahead and get your messages. So who is thinking about you? Okay. So we got the letter B. We got zero, but I can, I sometimes see the zero here as an O because it can, and then we have X. So as soon as I saw that I was like either an ox or a box, that's something specific. So in, I think it is uh, Chinese astrology, the ox, I think is also the pig, I think, or maybe 
I, I'm not sure. I think it's, I think that's the case. So there could be someone that is, um, you know, born the year of, of the ox, um, also box, some kind of box, or it could be an X, like an X. This is an X person, X boyfriend, X girlfriend. I, the only reason I say boyfriend is I'm seeing B O boy, X boyfriend doesn't have to be though. It could just be an X of any, any sort. So that is what we're seeing here, or it could just be Bex. Sometimes that's, you know, the name Rebecca, uh, Becca, something like that too. So whatever you guys see here, whatever you guys are feeling, I want you to take that as your message. All right. So let's go ahead and see what else is going on here. Okay. So your person could be very calm. Your person could be very tall and your person could be very warm hearted as well. Okay. So very calm, warm hearted individual, but something specific about them is that they could be taller than you or they're just abnormally tall. Okay. So that could be confirming for you that this is your person that you're, that you're thinking of that's thinking about you. Now we did get lust bound and it was kind of interesting because it came up with the zombie spirit and it makes sense because somebody who's usually holding a whip, right? Is in control. You know, you're in control of a horse, you're in control of a human. I mean, you know, whatever there could be, of course, that connection with this individual. Maybe you guys are into that sort of thing, or they have some sort of taste for that type of thing where, um, you know, you're dominant, they're submissive or vice versa, because we do have the word submissive here too. So when I saw those two together, I was like, Whoa, <laughs> no way. Um, you guys could love zombies. This person could love zombies. You know, um, there could be, you know, like I'm talking about movies, <laughs> you know, um, or they could just really be a person that needs to be in control. They could also see you as somebody who needs to be in control as well. And so it makes it very difficult between the two of you, who's going to be in control, who's going to be the dominant, who's going to be the submissive. They may want you to be more submissive. Yeah. So, but you could feel very bound to this person and they could be also feel very bound to you as well. Now we have names, energy alignment. I'm getting here that this person sees your name a lot and you also see their name. Of course we have M and three there. That could be something significant too on that card, but you're seeing their name a lot. You're seeing, they're seeing your name a lot. And what this means is that you guys are thinking about each other at that, at those moments that you guys are seeing their name or they're seeing yours. This is a confirmation that you guys are thinking about each other, that you guys are connected and plugged into each other's energy. So I do feel like this individual seems, feels quite bound by your energy, bound by their thoughts about you and this connection. Feels like they just can't shake this connection. Feels like they just can't shake your energy. So I do feel like number three is on its own, you guys. I felt like number one and two were connected and there could be you know, if you guys did choose number one or two and you're choosing number three, it could just be that there's just, you know, some, some energy from those and then some energy from this one, or it could just be two sides of the, of your person. But this individual feels quite, quite affected by you. They feel quite affected by this connection. They feel quite affected by everything. Okay. Now we have lifesaver. It's almost like your person they may want to throw you some sort of a lifeline or you want to throw them a lifeline. Um, they want to save you. They may want you to save them. I'm getting both of that energy here. Who saves who save yourself first kind of energy too, is what I'm seeing with that too. Um, but yeah, uh, of course there could be uh, somebody who is involved with, um, you know, the sea, you know, lifeguard pool, um, you know, they, they save lives. So this could be also somebody who is in the medical field. Uh, they could be connected to, like I said, the water boats, something like that as well, but we have haunted. So again, this told me that your person really is haunted by your connection. They're haunted by your memory. They're haunted by the connection between the two of you. You're constantly popping up in their energy field and they feel bound to you and you feel bound to them. So it's like, there's this real heavy energy here, right? real heavy energy. But the card that we have from their words to you is it all comes down to timing. So the timing just may not be right for the two of you to come together. There could be other things that they're still trying to shake off or, or, or shed old layers of themselves that they're trying to shed. They could be really trying to get rid of something from their past that still seems to be haunting them. They could have some kind of repercussions from their actions that they're still trying to clear up and pay for. So they may want to come into alignment with you, but feel like it might just not be the right timing. So the tarot we got were, was the moon, which is connected to Pisces energy. 
and we have three of wands and the ace of swords. So this told me here that somebody has a lot of fears. Somebody is hiding a lot of their fears as well. They're again, waiting for something. They're waiting for some sort of a breakthrough. They're waiting for something to clear up. So there's something about timing big time with this person. They're waiting for something to improve or, or to, um, clear up in their life before they come back into your life or before they reach out to you. This person is very aware of what they want, but they don't know how to get to a point where they feel confident. I feel like this person is lacking some sort of confidence there because these first cards very much showed your individual as being somebody who's very much in this calm energy. Okay. And very warm hearted. So very sensitive and Pisces people, and they don't have to be a Pisces just so you know, but they're very sensitive. They're very sensitive. And it may be that their exterior is very, very hard, but they, it's like boxed in. They feel closed in. They feel like they're in a box and they can't, they can't get out. They, they can't, um, they can't break out of something. They can't break out of themselves. They can't break out of their hardened shell. You know, they can't break out. They want to really be warm and, and they want to remain calm, but there's something going on within them. That's causing them to really, really just almost in, in, in a way like having a lot of nightmares for sure. Cause the moon card can be dreams as well. But in this case I'm getting here, they're plagued and obsessed and reminded nightmares right? Nightmare energy. So I just feel like your person right now is kind of boxed in and this boxed energy could be something about the, um, the pandemic right now, as in quarantine, they could have been in quarantine for so long. You could have been in quarantine for so long. You guys haven't been able to see each other, you know, connect in, in a physical way. And so there's a lot of distance and a lot of, um, a lot of things that may have just been going on between this time where there's a lot of unknown, unknowing or unknowns. Yeah. A lot of unknowns and they're waiting for some sort of breakthrough. They're waiting for some sort of answer here. They're waiting for something to become clear to them. So this person I feel is kind of trying to remain calm and wait for better timing and maybe even work on their body is what I'm getting to, because we have that tall energy. They might usually be somebody who's very tall, very confident, and they don't feel that way right now. I'm getting, I don't feel that way right now. So now we have triggered. So this is your advice. So it says when someone's behavior is irritating me, I take it as an opportunity to heal something unresolved within myself. So this person, it kind of like number one could trigger the hell out of you. I said that number one could trigger the hell out of you, or it could be really triggering you that this person with, you know, how you feel about them. They know how you feel about them. You, you know, you know, that they want this connection, you know, deep down in your heart space, that this is something that you guys have a, you know, like a, a real connection here, real potential for something here. But this person's energy, it's kind of like they're hell bent on doing things the hard way and letting their fears get the best of them, or they're afraid to, to lose control, or they're afraid that you're going to, there's some about something about control. We did see at the very beginning of the reading, right? Yeah. They might also, what I'm seeing here too, they might not want to be saved. You might be trying to save this person. They don't want to be saved. They don't want to be saved. It, it may also trigger them. I'm getting that too. It may trigger this person if you try to save them or you try to like offer too much to them. So you, you, you've got to let them kind of beef it out with themselves. You've got to let them figure it out for themselves. And that's advice I'd give anybody, not even people I do readings for. I mean, I'd give this reading. I mean, I'd give this advice to anybody. The last thing that you want to do is try to push someone, push your agenda on someone, tell them you see potential, you know, you could do all these things. If somebody ain't in the mood, they're not in the freaking mood. I know when I'm down in the dumps, the last thing I want is anybody telling me shit. So I'm really picking up on this person's energy. They might be just really wanting to just stick in their own environment, box themselves in, figure it out, let them figure it out. 
you trying to come in and try to save them. I'm getting here. It may blow up in your face and you may have already tried to do that with this individual. And so now it's very irritating to you. It's very irritating to you that this person just doesn't want to just be happy or they just don't want to figure their life out or fix their life right now. You might be that person that just really, really wants to just let's go already. And they're just not cooperating. <laughs> they're just not cooperating. So rather than continuing to be irritated by this individual, pull back, focus on yourself. Because sometimes when we're trying to fix other people, there's something that we're avoiding within ourselves. And that's what I'm getting from spirit for you. Number three, you might be trying to avoid something that you need to figure out on your own. So spend a little less time trying to figure out how you can fix this person and turn that energy back to yourself. So this was really cool when I got this because this is all about divine timing. When will this happen? It'll happen in the perfect time. So spirit is telling you here, you have to trust in divine timing. Don't try to push a timeline with this person. Don't stop asking to. I'm getting here. If you're getting readings, when, or you're, you're pulling cards every day for yourself, when, when, when I'm getting stopped just stop it already. Because when you're in that energy, you're not trusting in divine timing. You're not trusting that spirit has a plan here. Okay. So we have mirror, mirror. It says you'll share undesirable habits or traits with a person. So this person, if, so <laughs> if something irritates you about this person, it'll likely reflect something you believe you can't love in yourself. You guys, this is one of the reasons that I usually pull all of my cards on camera because I, I'm always one of those people where I'm a skeptical kind of like, ah, eh, it just seems so perfect, you know? And so, but it, this really was the way that the cards came through. It was just amazing to me. So it just, they played off of each other so well. Triggers, mirror, mirror. You guys are triggering each other beyond belief. There's something here where this person has certain things or certain traits about them that you can't stand. There's something that you need to pay attention. They're your mirror. They're mirroring you. You guys could see this person as like a twin flame. Okay but it's all happening for a reason. There's something that's happening for a reason. And this was to me, one of the coolest cards to get when I was asking spirit, how does this person really see you and feel about you in this connection? Six of cups. There is a divine connection here. They feel it. They know it. I mean, I felt it all throughout this reading. So to get this at the very end made sense to me. They, this, your person of the, like, it's a past. It's, it's, it's somebody, it's an ex. Okay. They're dreaming about you. Okay revisiting old dreams, the moon, it all came together. They're dreaming about you. Okay. They're revisiting your past. They're romanticizing the way things used to be with the two of you. I'm also getting though, that they are probably going back into their own inner child. They're embracing their inner child. They're going back to their past. They're reviewing all of the relationships that they've had with other people and anything undesirable about themselves. They're trying to work it out. So this person needs a lot of space and time to kind of figure what they need to do, like figure out what they want and, and what they, what they need to do. So as far as timing is concerned, spirit said, don't say it. Don't even put it out there. Don't put something out there for people to hold on to, but the cup suit is connected to summer. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not even going to say anything. So anyways, <laughs> but, um, I'm also getting to that. This person may want to come together with you and have a family. And that might also be something that is perhaps, you know, something that you guys will um, either do or discuss. And these children do not have to actually be birthed children. We could be talking about having some cats and dogs together. Those can be your children. I got a lot of cats and those are my babies. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you guys, so I hope that these messages resonated with you and that they were helpful to you in some way. And if none of them were, no worries, just disregard anything that um, didn't resonate for you. You guys take care. Bye-bye.